So one of the first things that we want to consider when we're dealing with vector-valued functions is simply the process of evaluating them for a given point in the domain uh, and, and graphing them. How do we kind of visualize um, a vector-valued function, right? Uh, and so the idea is, you know, we think in terms of these curves, uh, these graphs, right? Um, so the, the graph of a vector-valued function, the way we think of it is it's basically, think of it as the set of all, um, you know, terminal points or tips or end points, however you want to refer to, you know, to the, the, the tip of the vector. You know, so for each value of t, you sketch the vector. Um, you look at the points that are generated by the tip of the vector as t varies over the interval, and, and that's your graph. It's the curve, right? Um, so the idea is we, so we plot the points. Um, we, pl we plug in different values of t. We, we get the, the vectors. We draw the vectors. We look at the endpoints. That gives us the idea of the graph. Um, now, that's easier said than done. This is not really something that maybe a human should be attempting. We can't draw, you know, a reasonable number of vectors. We're not going to be able to draw enough vectors to give us a good sense of what the curve looks like. Um, that's a job that's best left to a computer. And of course, this sort of, um, you know, parametric definition for a curve is a great way to input a curve into a computer, right? Because a curve can generate you know, a very large number of points by sort of gradually incrementing the, the value of t over the, over the domain. Um, so, so a computer does a great job at plotting these things. People, not so much. Uh, so in this first example, we're going to just try to draw two vectors just to get an idea of, of how that might look. Um, and then moving forward, if you want to get an idea of the graph, what does it look like? Well, you might use some of those same techniques that we used back in when we were looking at parametric curves in the plane, uh, you know, eliminating the parameter and, and other tricks and tools for actually getting an idea of, of what that graph might look like, right? Um, but for this first one, it's a very, very basic thing that we want to do. Um, we've got this vector value function defined on some closed interval domain. Uh, we just want to evaluate the function at these two points and sketch the vectors, right? Okay, so r of minus 1, we get minus 1 cubed subtract minus 1, and then 1 over minus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, so that vector, uh, that's going to be minus 1 plus 1. We get 0, and then 1 over 2, so 0 and 1 half. That's our first vector. R at 2, we're going to get 2 cubed minus 2. And then 1 over 2 squared plus 1. So that is going to be 8 minus 2 is 6. And then 1 over 5. Um, and then if we wanted to plot those two vectors, okay, sketch our coordinate system, right? It's a two-dimensional vector, so we're going to plot it in the plane. And let's draw them in red, I think. All right, so r of minus 1, if we kind of go 1, 2. So there's 1, there's 2, 1, 1, 2. So this Vector points straight up, right? X component is 0, Y component is 1 half. So it's going to look something like that. R of minus 1. And R of 2, we're actually way out. Um, you know, maybe 6 is over here somewhere. Um, okay. And the Y value, 1 over 5, is, is just off the axis. So let's. Let's extend that axis a little bit more, just so we have that point of reference. And so we're at like 0 0.2 for the y value. So it's like, say, there, right? Something like that. OK? I don't know, not a great vector. But you get the idea. Um, and if you wanted to, you could plot other points as well to see where they go. Um, if we plugged in, for example, if we put 0, um, 
Uh, at t equals zero, we're actually, uh, you know, r of zero, notice, is uh, zero again, but then this, this y value is higher. There's r of zero. And uh, r of plus one, um, r of plus one actually is back there. So one of the things that you might kind of guess here is that there's, there's some kind of loop that happens, right? There seems to be some sort of loop going on. Um, if you think about the tips, and, and in fact, I think what we should probably see is something that kind of, you know, we're looking at the graph, something that kind of goes off like that. I think the ultimate, the end thing is going to going to look something along those lines because you can see that as, as t gets bigger in either the positive or negative direction, the y component is going to go to zero. If t is large and positive, we're going way out this way. If it's large and negative, we're going the other way. Um, and, you know, so you can do a little bit of, you know, just analysis of the functions. Think about what happens as t is big and small. Um, and, and you can piece these things together sometimes.